Hello everyone! In this video I'm going to talk about citations and references in Harvard referencing style. There are a number of reasons for referring to literature. We refer to literature to show that we are familiar with the field, to support our own ideas and findings, to identify a research gap which is especially important when we conduct a study, and to avoid being accused of plagiarism. It is important to acknowledge sources. Referencing in the Harvard style is a two-part process. It involves citations in the text, which is a brief indication of the source within the main body of the text, and a list of references, which is a complete list of all the cited references used in your work with full bibliographic details. Now I'm going to talk about each in more detail. Let's talk about in-text citations first. Sources are cited within the main body of your work by giving the surname of the authors followed by the date of publication. There are different ways of doing this. For example, you can refer to the author in brackets. In this case, you have the author's surname, a year of publication, there is comma between the two, and they are included in brackets. Let's have a look at the example. Here I have in achievement goal theory, teachers motivation is linked to their desires to achieve goals. This is not my idea. This idea belongs to Butler 2007. And to indicate this, I have the surname Butler and the year of publication in brackets. Another way of citing sources is grammatically integrating the author's name into the sentence. In this case, we have the author's surname, a year of publication, and only the year of publication is in brackets. Let's have a look at the examples. In the first example, I have Butler 2007 argues. Here only the year of publication is in brackets because the author's name, Butler, is grammatically integrated into the sentence. It is the subject of this sentence. So I have Butler argues. In the second example, I have according to Butler 2007. Again, the author's name is grammatically integrated into the sentence. That's why only the year of publication is in brackets. Now let's talk about direct quotes. If you use a direct quote, which is a repetition of someone's exact word, for example, you might want to copy and paste a phrase or a sentence from the source into your work. In this case, you should put it in quotation marks and provide a page number. Let's have a look at the example. I have a direct quote here jointly created and defined by the participants, the teacher and learners. The direct quote is included in quotation marks and I have the author's name, year of publication and page number. Let's have a look at the second example here. Again, I have the same quote which is included in quotation marks. Then again, the author's name, Walsh, year of publication 2002 and page number page 4 we provide a page number to help the reader to find the quote in the source also you need to know that if you use an image a diagram or a table from sources you should include a page number as well we treat an image a diagram or a table as a direct quote now let's talk about long quotes. If the quotation is more than two lines long, it is preceded by a colon and is indented at left and right margins. In this case, no quotation marks are used. Let's have a look at the example. So here I have the authors, Marcus and Nuris, year of publication, 1986, page number 960 because this is a direct quote so we must provide a page number and here is the quote so it is more than two lines long that's why it is indented at both sides and there are no quotation marks please remember that long quotes are cited differently there are no quotation marks and the quote is indented at both margins 
Now let's talk about sources with two authors. So if the source has two authors, you should cite both authors separated by and. In this example, I have Smith and Holian and the year of publication 2008. Basically, it is the same as citing sources with one author. The only difference is that you need to have and between the author's names. If a source has three or more authors, you should give only the name of the first author, and this is followed by the phrase et al. So you don't need to give everybody's name. In this example, I have Oysermann et al. 2015. If you refer to two or more sources at the same time, they should be separated by semicolons. The sources should be ordered by the year of publication with the oldest first. Here I have three sources, Mason 2002, Journey 2007, and Mears 2009. Mason 2002 comes first because we need to order the sources by the year of publication with the oldest first. So this one was published um, earlier than the other two. And please also pay attention that there is a semicolon after each source. If you refer to two or more sources at the same time and they were published in the same year, they should be listed alphabetically by author's surnames. In this example, I have two sources which were published in the same year, 2007. That is why I need to order them alphabetically by author's surname and Derny comes first. If two or more sources have the same author and are from the same year, they should be distinguished by adding a lowercase letter after the year. In this example, I have Cresswell 2012A and Cresswell 2012B. This means that Cresswell published two books in 2012 and to, to distinguish these two publications, I have A and B. If the item is produced by an organization treated as a corporate author. In this example, I have UNICEF 2011. Basically, the organization is the author of the publication. If you would like to cite a work cited by another author, that's fine, you can do that. But try to read the original source. If you can't access the original source, your in-text citation must include both the author of the idea you are using and the source in which you found them. Let's have a look at the example. In this example, I have Butler 2007 cited in Sahakan et al. 2018. This means that this idea belongs to Butler 2007, but I have read it in Sahakan et al. 2018. I haven't read Butler 2007. Please remember that in the list of references, you should give only the details of the source you have read. In this example, I would include only the work by Sahakan et al. 2018, because this is the source I have read. I will not include Butler 2007 in my list of references because I haven't read it. Now let's talk about some common issues related to in-text citations. The first issue is related to the author's name. Sometimes students use both the first name and the third name, like in this example, Norbert Schmidt 2000, or only the, the first name. Norbert 2000 or an initial and surname Anne Schmidt 2000. All these examples are incorrect. Please remember that when citing sources you need to use only the surname and a year of publication. So the correct version here will be Schmidt 2000. Another issue is related to spacing. In the first example, you can see that there is no space between the word and the bracket. It is important to have a space here. In the second example, there is no space after the comma and before the year of publication. It is important to have a space here as well. You might think that spacing is not important, but actually it is. So make sure you have space before the bracket 
and after the comma and before the year of publication. Another issue is related to consistency. In some referencing styles, there is no comma between the surname and the year of publication, and it is fine. You can use this referencing style, but you need to be consistent. If you decide to use this referencing style, it's fine, but make sure you use it throughout your work. You can't have comma in some cases and no comma in other cases. So whatever version you prefer to use, please be consistent. Finally, some students do not include the citation in the sentence. In the example here, you can see that the citation comes after the full stop, and this is wrong. Citation should be included in the sentence because it is related to this sentence, which means that full stop comes after the citation, not before it. Now let's talk about a list of references. It is a list of the publication information for the sources you have cited in your paper. It is intended to give your readers all the information they need to find those sources. It must include all sources you refer to in your work. Please make sure you include all sources you have used in the main body of your work, and please do not include sources you haven't cited in your work. And finally, it must be arranged alphabetically. Here is an example of a list of references. You can see that it is arranged alphabetically. If you would like to cite a journal article with one author, here is how you should do it. You should provide the author's surname and initial, then the year of publication, then the article title. Here is a journal title, which is in italic. Then you need to provide the volume and issue numbers and page numbers. If you are referencing a journal article which you have read online, for example, on a website or as a PDF, it's fine, but you don't need to include the link and the access date in your list of references. If you refer to a journal article which has two authors, you should do exactly the same, but in this case, of course, you should provide the name of both authors. The rest of the information is the same. Again, year of publication, the title of the article, the title of the journal, volume number, issue number, and, and page numbers. If you refer to an article with more than two authors, you must provide everybody's name here and there is and before the last author's name. The rest of information is the same. If you reference a book, Again, we have the author's name, initials, year of publication. Then we have a book title, a place of publication, and the publisher. If the book has several editions, in this case, you need to provide the edition number as well. If you refer to an ebook, which is a book that you have read online, that's fine. But in this case, in addition to all the information I have mentioned before, you need to also provide the date when you access the book and you need to provide the link. If you are referencing a book chapter from an edited book, which is basically a book in which each chapter is written by different authors, you need to give details of the chapter and the book in which you read it. Let's have a look at the example. You need to provide the author of the chapter, of course, the year of publication. Then we have a chapter title. Then we have book authors. Basically, these are people who edited the book. And then we have a book title. Of course, because this is a book, you need to also provide the place of publication and the publisher and also chapter page numbers. And here is an example of how to reference a website or a web page. I'm not going to talk about this in detail. In this video, I've covered some key information related to citations and referencing in Harvard referencing style. Of course, it doesn't involve all the details. 
You can find more examples and information on referencing following the link on the slide. Thank you for watching and good luck with your work.